Hi, please, give me a ride in here. That's, that's what you got. Okay, this is the Mel Torme interview at the Newport Casino. Uh, what's the date? 18th. Uh, August 18th. Mel Torme. Now, we won't use my questions, just your answers. I understand. Uh, Mel Torme, you've been a writer, an arranger, a conductor, drummer, actor, producer, television host, as well as one of the world's great vocalists. Where did all of this talent spring from? Oh, God, and his infinite wisdom and mercy only knows. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I guess if I've got those diverse talents, it's because I've listened a lot. I'm very eclectic. I admire a lot of people in all of the departments that you've mentioned. And I suppose in listening and studying, listening to and studying those people, uh, it's probably rubbed off. Mel, your experience as a drummer, has it affected your vocal style? I think so. I think my experience as a drummer, uh, I've noticed in many interviews, particularly in recent years one review of my work actually started all singers should be drummers and they talked about the fact that uh, whatever it is that i do on a syncopated basis as a scat singer probably stems to from some great degree uh, from my drumming mel who are your favorite drummers of all time well you start with buddy rich and then so you can, can you start with, well my favorite drummer of all time obviously is buddy rich who was a close friend and uh, of whom I am writing a biography even as we speak. Uh, I always felt that there was Buddy Rich and then a huge gap and then every other drummer. And there are some miraculously fine drummers and I love a lot of them. But I have to say Buddy Rich above and beyond anybody that I ever heard. Mel, where does the term scat singing come from and what exactly is it? Gee, you know, uh, I've heard can a lot of... Excuse me, Mel, can you start this? Oh, okay, Let okay. me explain yeah, scat singing. Ready, Mel? Go. Well, I wouldn't be so presumptuous as to try to explain scat singing. It's really the alter ego of what musicians do when they extemporize or contemporize on their horns. Uh, it, it's sort of vocal uh, instrumentalism, if you will. As far as the actual phrase scat singing is concerned, I don't really know where that came from. It certainly didn't come from the word scat, meaning get out of here. But uh, whatever it is, uh, I, I have tremendous joy doing it, and tremendous joy in listening to the people that I enjoy, who also sing scat. Uh, Mel, jazz first came to Newport in the early 50s. Uh, has the musical climate, especially for jazz, changed from then to 1989? I think the musical climate for jazz has changed considerably, because jazz did go through a fallow period where, you know, very candidly, Americans were not particularly interested in it. And consequently, uh, Europeans and Japanese people, the Scandinavians, were far more kind, not only to jazz, but to jazz artists, to expatriates who went over uh, and plied their jazz trades in foreign countries. But in the last, literally, the last 10 or 12 years, jazz has had an enormous renaissance in this country. I think one of the main reasons is George Ween, the fact that he has put together all of these jazz festivals and in a strange sense has created a, a kind of collective guilt uh, in the United States where Americans who are constantly being told, what's wrong with you? Jazz is the only native folk art that we ever gave to the world. And they're suddenly feeling a little guilty about it, saying, well, wait a minute, why don't we love it as much as the Europeans and the Scandinavians and the Australians and the Japanese? And I think for that reason, among others, also the fact that there's some fine new jazz artists, I think the jazz has taken a big foothold and indeed had a great renaissance. Mel, uh, the American public has received a great gift in entertainment from you and George Shearing. Won't you tell us something about how you feel working with George? Working with George Shearing, uh, I've said this before, and uh, I think it's a fairly apt and hopefully original saying. I say that George and I are two bodies with but a single musical mind. We really do think so much alike musically. We love the same kind of music. And I am talking about a great amount of classical music as well as popular and show music and movie music and, of course, jazz. That it really is a melding of musical minds when we get together. Uh, he's a great gentleman, a genius at the piano, and a great friend. Mel, besides Buddy Rich, who would you say has been the most tremendous influence on your life in music? Absolutely, and unequivocally, I have to say two people. Unequivocally, Ella Fitzgerald as a singer, 
Could you excuse me? Could you start that again? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I keep forgetting that That's you want right. me to. That's all okay. right. We can handle it. You're rolling. We're rolling. Right. Go. I would say that the two greatest influences on me uh, as a musician and as a singer, well, first of all, as a singer, unquestionably, Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, there are a lot of other singers like Sinatra and all oh, the, the list is endless who have affected me and influenced me. But Ella is the greatest influence on me and the greatest inspiration. As far as being a musician and an arranger, quite singly and aptly, Duke Ellington, unquestionably, for me, the greatest jazz musician, arranger, composer who ever lived. Mel, how do you feel about the... Well, let's walk this closer. Can we get a little closer? Yeah, get down. All right. It doesn't have to be as high, just closer. The lights just a couple more, Mel. Okay. Stand by. Tell me when. Anytime. Uh, Mel, this is a this is a a bullet question. Let me warn you. How do you feel about the new movement in jazz, the fusion movement, the electronic movement in jazz? As far as the new movement, the so-called electronic, the fusion movement in jazz, uh, as long as it does what Duke Ellington prescribed, I'm for it. Because Duke Ellington once said it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. I think an awful lot of it is too technical. I think an awful lot of it is, is exploratory and experimental without really being wildly musical, without being digestible. George Shearing once made a great quote. He once said, for instance, when the Bop era came in, progressive jazz, he said, I incorporate Bop into my music only to the degree of digestibility. And I think that's a great saying for all kinds of new music. If it's digestible, mentally, if it's co comprehensible, and if it swings, I love it. What's ahead from El Torme? What's ahead from El Torme? Well, there's a one-man show brewing on Broadway that looks like it's absolutely going to happen. Uh, I do the Hollywood Bowl almost as we speak for the 13th year in a row. Uh, just done uh, Carnegie Hall with the JBC Festival, thanks once again to George Ween. Uh, and uh, just life keeps rolling along. Another, another wonderful uh, guest shot on Night Court coming up in January. It's my fifth with Night Court. And probably I will host for the third year in a row, although this hasn't actually been set yet, but I think it's going to happen, the PBS New Year's Eve special from Baltimore. It will be my third year in a row doing that. So uh, life is very complicated and good. I'm hoping to be able to put the Buddy Rich book on the market late spring, early summer of 1990. One more question. The, uh, you know, Leonard Feather, the noted jazz critic, and Darlene Chan, the noted jazz critic, she wanted me to ask you, when it's all over, what would you like to have said about Mel Torme? Well, I'd like, to, I'd like him to say that I never copied anybody. I'm eclectic, and I admit it, and I am influenced, as I've said earlier, by a lot of people. But I'd like to think that to some degree I'm an original, that I have never gone out of my way to copy any of the people that I admire. So if they just said Torme was something of an original, that would be a great epitaph. Thank you, Mel Torme. Thank you. Got it. Good. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>